this part, it says write each as a percent, use repeating decimals if necessary. So all we do, when the percentage is given, when we have a, a decimal, all we do is move it to the right two spaces. So I'm going to call this 78%. If you need to add an extra zero, so for you to be able to move it two places, then add an extra zero. If there's many numbers, only move it twice. So I said only move it two places to the right. Okay, so you guys have this, and the reviews one through six, on the test, there will be four of these questions. So, any questions for the, fir for the first section? And I left your paper in there. Number five? All right. Looking at question number five, move the decimal two places to the right. I said only two. So I'm going to call this 0 0.16%. There's still the point because you only move it twice. All right. Any other questions? There's four of these on the test. On the final test, there's four of these. Now, looking at question number seven. Number two. All right. So, looking at question number two, move it two places to the right. So, you're going to finish with four percent. All right, now looking at question number seven, it says write each as a fraction or percent, it's always over 100. So let me start by writing 14 over 100. So that's what percent means. So John, thank you. So 14 over 100, simplify if possible. I'm thinking of uh, uh, 14 as seven times two. 100, I'm thinking of this as 50 times 2. I cancel out the 2, so I'm left with 7 over 50. If we can simplify more, then simplify. I, in this case, we cannot. So 7 over 50. Isaiah. Thank you. So this takes us up until number 12 on the review. On the final, there's four of these as well. I said, expect four of these on the final. Any questions up until 12? Yes. Nine. Looking at number nine, I'm going to start with 50 over 100. The percent is always over 100. 50, I'm thinking of this as 50 times 1. 100, I'm thinking of this as 50 times 2. Cancel out the 50s, and you're left with 1 over 2. Any other questions up until 12? 11. Looking at 11, I have 8 over 100. I'm thinking of 8 as 4 times 2. I'm thinking of 100 as 4 times 25. I cancel out the 4s, and I'm left with 2 over 25. Some people come and say, well, divide by 4. That's basically what we did. Divide by 4, and you get 2 over 25. All right. Any other questions for the first 12? Now looking at number 13, we're going to have to be dealing with markups and discounts. <clears throat> so first of all, I'm going to start with the number 32,000. Right, there, there's no cents. Like there's no change. on this $32,000. With markup, I know the price goes up. So from 100%, I'm going to increase 45%. 145%, we write that as 1.45. If you notice, that's 145% written as a decimal. Remember, from percent to decimal, I move it two places to the left. So, <clears throat> once again, for markup, the price goes up. So, we multiply 32,000 
times 1.45. I'm going to use a calculator for that. 32,000 times 1.45. And I will get 46,400. This one has no change. There's no, there's no numbers after the decimal. So no change. If you have decimals, two decimal places. Like every di every time we deal money, two decimal places. If you have decimals, <clears throat> it makes sense that from thirty-two thousand the price went up because it was a markup. But if it's a discount, the price goes down. So on the review, I'm giving you guys some markup. There's four mm -hmm. questions for markup, and then I'm also gonna give you guys some discounts. Remember for this one, I'm gonna multiply one thousand. 100 and I'm going to multiply this by 90 percent remember once again I'm not interested on what 10 percent I'm interested in how much I'm paying and I'm paying 90 percent from 100 percent I'm paying 90 so I'm going to multiply 1100 times 0 0.90 and I'm going to get 990 In this case, it makes sense that the price went down because it was a discount. And then on the final, you guys will have four questions of markups and four questions of discount. All right, so on the review, this takes us up until number 24. Any questions up until 24? 14? <coughs> All right, looking at number 14, I'm going to go 119.95 <clears throat> because it's a markup. I'm going to write 176% as a decimal. It's 176. Move it twice to the left. So 1.76. So let me go, and I'm going to go 119.95 times... 1.76 make sure you run it to two decimal places and I'm gonna call this 211.11 the third number was too small so I ignored it so it's 211 dollars with 11 cents once again round it to two decimal places any other questions up until 24? No? Okay. Now looking at question number 25, we want to find the percent change, round to the nearest percent, state if it is an increase or decrease. First of all, from 17 to 27, we want to know how much it changed. So subtract the two numbers. From 17 to 27, subtract the two numbers and you're going to have 10. Okay, subtract the two numbers. And I'm going to divide this by the first number. So by 17. So always divide it by the first number. So according to the calculator, I'm going to go 10 divided by 17 and I'm going to get 0 0.588. There were some numbers, but I know with percent, I, I, from a decimal to percent, I have to move it two places to the right because it says round to the nearest percent means nearest whole number. So no decimals, nearest whole number. So 58.8, I'm going to call that 59%, right? Because the 8 was big enough to push it to 59. So 59%. Now, it says it stated if it is an increase or decrease from 17 to 27, the, pr the number went up. So that's what we call increase. If the, part, if the number goes down, it decreases. So 59% increase. And again, the way we get this, we find out how much it changed. So subtract the two numbers and divide it by the first one. And then nearest whole number, and then tell me whether it's increase or decrease, and that's pretty much it.
And there's going to be four of these on the test. The final test, it has four of these. Any questions? 27. 27. Andrew, was that the one you were going to ask as well? All right, let's take a look at 27. So from 70.4 to 7, let me subtract the two numbers first. So I'm going to go 70.4 divided by 7, and I'm going to get 63.4. And I'm going to divide this by 70.4. Always divided by the first number. So I said I subtracted 70.4 minus 7. I got 63.4. And I'm going to divide this by 70.4. According to the calculator, I get 0 0.900, so I have to move this two places to the right, so I'm going to call this 90%. Since the number went down from 70.4 to 7, the number went down, I'm going to call this decrease. Any other questions? Yes. 30. All right, so subtract the two numbers. Obviously, I'm going to go 99 minus 93.5, because 99 is bigger. So 99 minus 93.5, I'm going to get 5.5. Okay, subtract the two numbers to see what's the difference, and divide this by the first number, 93.5. So let me go 5.5 divided by 93.5. According to the calculator, it says 0 0.058. So since I had to move it two places to the right, I'm going to call this 6%. All right, I'm rounding to the nearest whole number. 6% since the price, since the number went up. I'm going to call this increase. The, the number here is miles, but mileage. But since the number went up, I call it increase. Any other questions? Right, let me take roll really quick. Okay. 